Hello, class. Chapter seven, we're headed into the home stretch. Only a little bit left. So chapter seven, incremental analysis for short-term decision-making. We're gonna concentrate on these two topics here. Analyze a special order decision, analyze a make or buy decision. These are where we're gonna do our homework problems. We have one problem on each. Uh, this information is also good for you to know, good for background. Uh, describe the five steps in the decision-making process and define and identify relevant costs and benefits. Those are just good things to know. Uh, the company they're using for examples in this chapter is IKEA. Which you're probably familiar with. So what are the steps in the decision-making process? Well, first step, you have to identify the problem. Second step, see if there are different alternatives to solve that problem. Then you evaluate the pros and cons of each alternative. Then you make your decision and then you monitor the results of your decision to see that you made the right one because you may have to change course. And they give you an example here. It's kind of a nice example. Let's say you were looking for a place to live. And in this example here, they're saying that you had really two choices of where to live. You could either rent a one bedroom apartment by yourself, or you could share a three bedroom house, which means you'd have roommates. And they take you through the analysis, right? To, to take the one bedroom apartment would cost you $950 a month. To rent a room in a three, room house, three bedroom house would cost you $825 a month. There are pros and cons, right? The, uh, the one bedroom apartment, you have privacy. And in this case, it was closer to campus. Uh, but the, bed, the three bedroom house, you have much more space, you have a backyard, and you have people to hang out with if that's what you like doing. So make the decision, which choice, which would you rather do? Well, I guess if you're on a tight budget, that $125 a month is gonna make the difference. So in that particular case, you might go for the three bedroom house. But if $125 doesn't mean that much to you and your privacy is more important, well, then you probably would go with the one bedroom apartment, right? So again, it's never that easy. There are pros and cons of each alternative. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, uh, but you should probably read this section, opportunity costs. There was something I wanted to show you. This discussion of relevant versus irrelevant costs, which then turns into a discussion of opportunity costs. Right? I'm not really gonna get into that with you, but it's something that's good to know in a general business sense. And you may, you may have studied that in other classes. So what I wanna look at now are some of these decisions, special order decisions. Let's say you have a business, everything is fine. Uh, you have excess capacity, which means you have the ability to make more products. Um, and someone comes to you and tries to make you an offer. 
they want to buy some of your products from you, but they don't want to pay full price. Should you take that or should you just tell them to get lost? All right, so they give you an example here. A major university has approached IKEA about buying some desks that they want to install in the dorm rooms. The university has offered to buy 5,000 of these desks at $200 each. The desks normally sell for $300 each. Now, initially you would say, no, absolutely not, right? I can't afford to sell the desk for you for, for that cheap, but maybe you can. So if we look at what the costs are to produce the desk, we have direct material, $125, direct labor, $30, variable overhead, $15. We can forget about the fixed cost because our fixed costs are already being met by the other business that we're doing. So really, 125 plus 30, right, is that 155 plus 15 is 170. It's costing us $170 to make the desk. They're offering $200. So we're still making $30 a desk times 5,000 desks. That's $150,000. That is a pretty substantial amount of money to make for just one order, right? So here's, they show you how to do that. Here's the extra revenue you're gonna get. 5,000 desks times $200 is a million, million dollars revenue. And here's all your costs direct materials, direct labor, variable overhead. Forget the fixed cost. That's $850,000 or $170 a desk. So you're making $30 a desk times 5,000 desks is $150,000. Now let's look at the problem we had for homework. Exercise 7-6. Exercise 7-6. Let me read it to you. This is on page 333. <clears throat> Analyzing special order decision. MSI has been approached by a fourth grade teacher from Portland about the possibility of creating a specially designed game that would be custom made for her classroom and environment. The teacher would like an educational game to correspond to her classroom coverage of the history of the Pacific Northwest and the state of Oregon in particular. MSI has not sold its products directly to teachers or school systems in the past, but its marketing department has identified that possibility during a recent meeting. The teacher has offered to buy 1,000 copies of the CD at a price of $5 each. MSI could easily modify one of its existing educational programs about U.S. history to accommodate the request. The modifications would cost approximately $500. A summary of the information related to production of MSI's current history program follows. So they tell you, direct materials, $1.50, direct labor, 60 cents, variable overhead, $2.25. Forget the fixed overhead. Right? Remember, that this, is, this is an extra order on top of all the other business that they do. All the other business that they do is covering those fixed costs. Sales price, the normal sales price is $12. Now remember that this teacher is offering to pay $5. So again, you look at it at the beginning and you say, well, I normally get 12, they only wanna pay me five. I probably shouldn't do it. 
But let's look deeper. So part one of the problem says, compute the incremental profit or loss from accepting the special order. So they are gonna have an additional $5,000 in revenue. 1,000 CDs times $5 each, 5,000. The incremental variable costs, the direct material was $1.50, the direct labor was 60 cents, the variable overhead was 225. If I add those things together, it comes out to $4.35 per CD times 1,000 CDs, $4,350. Now, in order to take this order on, I have to spend an additional $500 to modify my production. Right? They mention that in there. They say modifications would cost approximately $500. I have to subtract that $500. That's like an added cost. So I'll wind up making $150. So the second part of the question says, should MSI accept the order? Well, strictly based on dollars and cents, yes, they should, because their net income will increase by $150. Uh, part three, suppose the special order had been to purchase 1,000 copies of the program at $4.50. So instead of $5, what if the selling price was $4.50? Well, your revenue would be $4,500 now, 1,000 times 450. Your variable cost would stay the same 1,000 times $4.35 is $43.50, and you still have this $500. So now when you do it, now you're gonna have a $350 loss. Number four. This is a little tricky. You have to think about this a little bit. Number four. Suppose MSI is operating at full capacity, right? When this, when this teacher approached them, they couldn't make anything else. They're full. But yet, they still would like to take this order on for the potential that it could lead to other things down the road. So the question is, to accept a special order, it would have to reduce production of its other program, right? Its other program. Compute the special order price at which MSI would be indifferent about accepting or rejecting the special order, right? So they're at full capacity. They're charging $12 a CD uh, to make this history CD. But they would like to take this order on. What price would they have to charge to take this order on? Well, they would have to charge the $12 they're charging for their other program, plus an additional 50 cents to cover that modification cost, right? So they would have to charge that teacher from Portland $12.50, not the $5 that the teacher is offering to pay, Right? For them to not lose any money, they would have to charge $12.50. Right? So you see how that is computed here. Now, number five, provide two reasons why a company might accept a special order that did not increase profits. In other words, here, yeah, look, you know, we're going to lose $350 here. Now, again, that's not the end of the world if it leads to something else down the road. So look what they say here. Reasons to accept a special order that does not immediately increase profits include future potential sales to the school system, the ability to market the product to other school systems. If you did it for Oregon, now you could turn around and you could do it for all the other states and market it to the other states. All right, so... You know, sometimes you, you're willing to lose a little bit of money to, uh, 
to uh, to make more money down down the road. Okay. So now we're on to the next topic, make or buy. <clears throat> okay, now let's say I make a product. The product, the product is made up of different parts. And uh, should, I, should I make everything or are there certain things I should buy? Right, that's what this make or buy decision is about. So here's a, a uh, a situation with uh, Ikea and their food service. Now I've been to Ikea many times, but I've never eaten in there, but I hear it's uh, a unique experience. So here's a situation here with Ikea. Suppose Ikea currently provides its own food service and that a typical Ikea store serves an average of 15,000 customers a month with the following revenue and costs associated with that function, right? So they charge roughly $10 a meal, right? 15,000 times 10, 150,000. Direct material is the cost of the food, direct labor, the wages they have to pay, right? 37,500 plus 15,000. They have variable overhead, of 50 cents, that's 7,500, right? And they've got the fixed cost. Now again, fixed cost is always gonna come into this. So now anyway, they're making a profit of $4 a meal. And if they serve 15,000 meals, that's $60,000 in profit. What if they could outsource the food service? What if they could hire a company to come in and do all the cooking and all the cleaning up and, and everything else? And they would have to pay them naturally, right? What would go into that, right? Here's what happens. Assume IKEA has been negotiating with an outside supplier to provide food service. Under the proposed agreement, Ikea would pay the supplier 50% of the revenues generated from the food service or an average of $5 a customer. In exchange, the supplier would be responsible for buying food, hiring workers to prepare and serve it, and all varial expenses such as condiments, paper, and cleaning. The supplier would also be required to hire the current IKEA food service supervisor to oversee the operation. IKEA would continue to provide the facilities, equipment, and utilities. That sounds like the fixed cost. But would use some of the space currently used for food service preparation to a new service to provide on-site assembly assistance. Isn't it a pain when you go there and buy this stuff, now you gotta take it home, put it together. Wouldn't you rather just pay them a little bit extra and have them do it? Assume the supervisor makes $5,000 a month and the new assembly service would generate $15,000 in contribution margin per month. Should IKEA continue to provide its own food service or should they let somebody else do it? Here's the analysis. Option one, I just keep doing what I'm doing. Right, these are all the same numbers that we saw at the beginning here, right? These are all the same numbers. Should I keep doing what I'm doing? Or should I outsource? Now remember, if I outsource, I'm gonna pay half the revenue to somebody else. So my revenue now won't be 150, it'll be half that, right? It'll be 75, but I won't have these variable costs, I will not have them. I will not have them, right? I won't have this 37,500. I won't have this 15,000. I won't have this 7,500. I will though have fixed overhead of 25,000. Now again, 
I what my fixed overhead was 30. Why is this 25? Because remember the deal I made was that the supplier has to pay the supervisor's salary of $5,000 a month, right? Not me, I'm not paying them anymore. That outside company is gonna pay. So now my fixed overhead isn't 30,000, it's 25. Now I'm gonna pick up an additional $15,000 in revenue from that assembly operation I'm gonna have. So bottom line, I was making 60,000 a month. Under this new plan, I'm gonna be making 65,000 a month in profit. So my profits are gonna increase $5,000. This sounds like a no brainer to me, right? This sounds like something that you would do. And this way you don't have to be bothered buying food and hiring people, right? And you'll have your own person in there watching to make sure that everything goes the way you want it to go. And you don't even have to pay that person. That person's gonna get paid by the, the outside company, right? This sounds like a good deal. I wish I could negotiate something like that. Right. Now let's look at exercise seven, make or buy. This is similar, not exactly the same as the Ikea example, but I think you'll get it. Again, this is on page 333. MSI is considering outsourcing the production of the handheld controlled module used with some of its products. The company has received a bid from Monty Legend Company to produce 10,000 units of the module for $16 each. The following information pertains to MSI's production of the control modules. So we've got direct materials of nine, direct labor of four, variable overhead of two, right? Lee, don't worry about the fixed. So what is it costing us to make? Nine plus four is 13 plus two is 15. It's costing us $15 times 10,000. It's costing us $150,000 to make those controllers. If I buy them, it's costing me $16 a unit times 10,000 or 160. So what's the difference between making and buying? It's $10,000, but it favors me making it, right? It's still cheaper for me to make it than to buy it. So number two, should MSI buy the modules or continue to make them? They should continue to make them. It's costing them less money to make them. Okay, number three, suppose that MSI, that the space MSI currently used for the modules could be utilized by a new product line that would generate $35,000 in annual profit. Recompute the difference in cost between making and buying under this scenario. Does this change your recommendation to MSI? If so, how? Yes, it would change the recommendation because now I'm gonna have profits. I'm gonna have additional profits. So the cost of making is 150,000, right? Same as it was up here. The cost of buying is still 160,000. But if I don't have to make that product, I have like empty space in my factory that I can use for something else. And I'm gonna use that to make new products. And those products are gonna generate $35,000 in additional profit. So is it really gonna cost me 160? It's really only costing me 125 to buy those products, right? Because if I didn't buy them, if I continued to make it, I would lose this $35,000. So now if I were to make them, it would cost me 150. If I buy them, net of the additional uh, profits, it's really costing me 125. The difference of $25,000 now favors buying Right, this would change the decision because it will result in $25,000 in additional profit. 
So that's everything we had from chapter seven, right? We're gonna do chapter eight next, and then nine, and we are done, and you can have your life back and the rest of your summer back. All right, so I'll see you soon with chapter uh, eight.